Welcome to Kids Time with Mr. C and Dr. R. That's me. Today we're going to be talking about being thankful. Um, so hopefully you guys are ready for that. But before we get into our lesson for today, we're going to have another challenge. Wait, challenge time? It's challenge time. Again? Yeah. I think we're going to have to leave it in. We did a pretty good time, good job last time. Let's do it again. All right. Start us off. You, you start. Oh, you are... Yeah, I'm going to be the backup. Okay. Listener. You're the backup singer. Okay. okay. All right. Ready? Here we go. It's challenge time. Today we're doing Bible trivia. Try to follow along with us, give your answers, and uh, let us know how you did. And uh, last time, Mr. Koblenz won. I did shave my beard, and as you can see, he shaved his as I, well. I shaved mine as well. You know, I, I thought, I actually honestly felt bad for you, and I thought, you know what? There's not really even a penalty. I'll just shave mine. Wow. Okay. That's I not mean, true. I just, he I was like feeling crazy, and just, bam, wow. gone. All right. And as you can see, I... Don't have it. I didn't have one last time. Oh, yeah. Awkward. <laughs> Comment below if you think the loser should have to do something uh, ridiculous or crazy. I'm All right. First question. Who was Rachel's first son? Cue the music. I'm honestly drawing. I'm like, okay. Set. Joseph. Oh, Joe, okay. Joe. I got Joseph. You got Joseph. Hopefully we're right. If not, it's gonna be quite embarrassing. And the answer is Joseph. Good job. One to one. One to we're one. We're doing better than last time. Yeah, I think last time we were zero crusade. to zero. Yeah. What is the only miracle talked about in all four gospels? Let's reveal this thing. Three, Three two, two, one. Boom. boom. Bam. Resurrection. If that's not a miracle, I don't know what is. Water uh -huh. in two wine, like two wine. Yeah, in two wines. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see. And the answer is oh, feeding wow. the 5,000. Oh. Pastor Dylan also knew that one. If he was playing, he'd be beating us right now. Yeah, thankfully but he's not. Thankfully so he's, he's not count. playing. And hopefully none of you guys at home are beating us What either. we got going on here? <laughs> Next question is, who was Malchus? Easy. Malchus? Easy. We should have done, what's that one game? Is it Pictionary? No, that's not. What do you, where you have to act something out? Oh, we could act this one out. Sure. I'll act it out. Do you want me to act it out? Sure. Let's see it. Okay. That was fun. That was fun. All right. All right. Well, what's the answer? I put servant that got ear cut off. Yeah, I put servant of the high priest. But I think there's only one servant of the high priest. Um, I think I pantomimed. What yeah, you did. Very you, you clearly. Did. All right. We'll see. And the answer is the servant of the high priest whose ear Peter cut off, but Christ healed it. I mean, that's exactly what we just did. Yeah, that was fun. You played Peter and Christ. I played the servant of the high priest. That was fun. Yeah. Next question. Whom did the Jews ask to be released rather than Jesus? <laughs> two, one, Barabbas! I think I spelled it right. I don't know. I put two Bs, but I'm not sure. Oh, stink. I think it Let's is two see. Bs. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Barabbas with two Bs! Does that mean that mine counts and yours doesn't? Uh, Who was Naboth? Who was Naboth? <laughs> you ready? All right, I'm ready. Three, two, one. What, what was it? <laughs> Bible character. It's a Bible character. Um, I'll tell you right now. A vineyard refused to sell it to Ahab. Oh, Remember the yes. of pirates I do. How does that start? King Ahab went to walking in royal garments grand and saw a lovely vineyard while gazing o'er the land. You know this song. Yeah, I know song. It's a good one. All right, what's the last question? What is it going to be? How many verses are in the Bible? How many verses are in the Bible? This one actually has choices. 52,851, 31,102, or 26,905. All right, let's see. Got this. A, B, or C. Survey says. Three, two, one, B! A. I mean, 
Yeah, A is the largest number. I almost went with A. We'll see. And the answer is 31,102, which the score is now 3 to 3, tied up. So that's a tie, right? All right, anyways, let's get into our Bible verse. Ephesians 5.20. If you have your Bible with you, look up Ephesians 5.20, and we're going to say it all together. Ephesians 5.20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells us we need to give thanks always for all things. It's easy to give thanks when you're winning. Yeah, I might say so. Uh, but when you're losing, it can be a little bit harder. But what the Bible tells us is we need to give thanks always, in all things, uh, no matter what's going on. Mr. Collins, when is a time that you found it more difficult to be thankful for the situation you were in? Yeah. <clears throat> Last summer, I was, um, I was out cutting some grass. Those of you who know me know that I mow grass. Um, anyways, I was on my first lawn of the day, and it was going great. Made good time. Got back in my truck, went to start my truck, nothing. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. All right, I have all these things I have to get done. There's no way. So anyways, I call, I call the mechanic, Mr. Turbo, and I'm like, you know, what is this? And he's like, it sounds like it might be the starter. You know, he's like a whiz when it comes to cars. And I, he's like, you can try hitting on it with a hammer. You know, old. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm all for trying that. And so I'm, I'm, I opened up the hood, that's what you're supposed to do, right? And I'm looking around there, and I'm like, where's the starter at? And so I find something, and I'm like, there it is. That's got to be it. And so I didn't have a hammer, but I had like this big um, wrench thing with me. And so I'm like taking it and like shoving it down. And I'm like, tick, 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 and I'm like, oh, it don't break anything. And I'm I, the whole time I'm like, man, what am I gonna do? I've got all this stuff I need to get done. And then this guy pulls up, trying to be helpful. And uh, he, you know, he comes over and he's like, have you tried hitting the starter? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, let me give it a try. And so he like crawls under the other side, like the passenger side of the vehicle underneath and behind the wheel well. And he, he finds something there and he's like, oh, here's your starter. And I'm like, that's not, that's not what I was hitting. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't break anything. And so he gets under there and he tries it and it doesn't work. And he leaves. And anyways, um, in situations like that, um, and it, it wound up working up just fine, you know. But sometimes I have like little pity parties and I was just, uh, the temptation there would have been to be ungrateful, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because everything's going, you know, poorly for me right now. Why does this happen to me? But bottom line is like God is good no matter what. And I, I think I always frequently have to be reminded of that. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, you know, we're, we all often experience situations where it can be a little bit more difficult to be thankful. And uh, <clears throat> let's say even right now, I mean, you're at home, you don't get to see your friends as much as you'd like. Uh, you don't get to go to the places you might have planned on going. I even know of some kids whose families planned vacations during this time, and now they don't get to go on the vacation they've been looking forward to for so long. And sometimes it can be difficult to be thankful when you're in a tough situation. Yeah. But God tells us, and in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God wants us to be thankful in everything. That, that means not just when good things happen. It's easy to go to God and thank him for something when something good happens in our life. But when bad things happen in our life, being thankful for those as well. Because we know God says he's going to work all things together for good. And we may not be able to see that good. We may not know exactly what's going on. But we can trust that God is in control and we can be thankful for that and we can be thankful for the situation that he's put us in. I want each of you to comment something. If each of you could comment something of what you're thankful for during this time. And uh, it's easy to complain. If I asked you guys to put something down that you miss from normal life, I'm sure it'd be blowing up with comments of, oh, I wish I could be at school with my friends. I miss so-and-so. I wish we'd go on this vacation. I wish we'd go out to eat here. I wish we'd go there. But what I'm asking you to do is to put that aside and to comment something that you're thankful for. And be a good witness to other people. Let people know, hey, I'm thankful in everything. In every situation, I can be thankful. And, you know, something that I'm thankful for in this situation is um, seeing what God is doing. And it's, it's tough for a lot of people, but it's amazing 
to see God do such an amazing work. There's more people getting online and listening to preaching of God's word than we normally even have come to a church service. And there's people who are hearing the gospel now who would never have heard it if it weren't for this situation. So I'm super thankful for that. Another kind of smaller thing that I'm thankful for is I'm thankful that I'm getting to spend more time with my, my puppy, Bailey. And uh, she we don't get to spend a lot of time with her. She, I feel bad for her. She's at the house by herself. And right now, she is loving having me and my wife around more. So it's been a lot of fun. I don't have any kids yet, but you know, I like spending time with my dog. Um, so, uh, Mr. Collins, what's something that you're thankful for right now? You know, uh, I was thinking about this this morning. I am thankful for the extra time, not with my puppy, but with my wife and daughter. Yeah. I'm not going to tell the rest of my story today, but I'm going to continue from where I left off. Last time I talked to you guys, there I was crossing this raging river. And if you want to know how I got to this raging river, go back to our last episode and listen, what happened to make me get to this raging river? But I'm crossing this raging river, holding onto this rope that's, that's spread across the river. I'm, I'm crossing, I get to about the middle, <clears throat> and I thought I was going to slip. I thought my hands were gonna, I was gonna lose my grip and I was just gonna float away in that river never to be seen again. I was scared, but luckily I was able to hold on and I got to the other side of the river, completely drenched, my clothes, my shoes, everything, just soaking wet and sitting there waiting for my dad to get across. And uh, now that we're across the river, as I told you last time, the first time we went up to this waterfall, we walked up the creek, but this is no longer a creek. So we can't just walk up this thing. So we have to hike up this mountain and down and back up to try to get to this waterfall. <clears throat> and on this trek, we run into some very interesting things. So we started hiking and something you need to know about me is um, I'm not like Mr. Koblenz. I'm not an outdoorsman, okay? I, I mean, Mr. Koblenz would probably be in his element hiking up this mountain in the jungles of Cambodia, mosquitoes and all the fun stuff, you know, but not me. I, soaking wet, hiking up this mountain, not in my element, <clears throat> but we start walking up this mountain, having a good time, being thankful for the fact that we uh, have the ability to be out here, to go up and see this waterfall. We're excited. And as we're walking, we're just talking to Stevie, talking about the area, and we start to notice um, some strange things. So there's some, uh, almost looks like, a fort, I guess you could say, up at the top of this mountain. And uh, my dad asked, Stevie, do you know what that is up there? And we, he started looking around and he realized it was one of the old Khmer Rouge bases. Okay, which that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, we're at this area that has this old military base, but the part that wasn't so cool is that he then realized this was an area we were supposed to stay out of because it hadn't been cleared of landmines. Okay, this area has not been cleared of landmines. That means we are walking in a landmine infested forest. Me, my dad, and Steve. Um, so we could turn around and walk back the way we came, which, I mean, could be just as dangerous. Or we could press forward and try to stay as far away from that base as we could and hope we don't hit a landmine. So we did the only logical thing. We continued forward. And we kept walking and going through these woods, and uh, <clears throat> I there were these cliffs. I remember this one cliff. I was I was trying to come down. I, I thought it felt like it was a ginormous cliff. I was, it was probably like six feet tall or something. But I was coming down this thing. It took me forever. There was a a big uh, ridge that I had to cross over. And right as I got to the other side of that ridge, I was climbing over best I could. Right got to the other side, and Stevie screamed, blood curdling scream. He was just ahead of me. I was walking behind him trying to follow in his steps because I did not want to step on no landmine. I was going to walk where he had walked. If somebody was stepping on a landmine, it was him. And so I was walking behind him and suddenly he screams. I was scared to death. I had no idea what was going on. And if you want to find out how I reacted in this situation, and what in the world caused Stevie to scream? You're gonna have to come back next time and hear the rest of the story. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. You're gonna leave me hanging. Yeah, I'm, are you curious? 
Yeah, I'm curious. All right, well, you'll find out next time. You and Mr. C will find out what happened to Stevie. Did he step on a landmine? What, what happened? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you'll have to find out next time. So uh, join us next time. And uh, meanwhile, remember to be thankful. And uh, let us know some things that you're thankful for. In this situation, I'm just thankful that I got out of it in one piece, to be honest with you. But there's always something to be thankful for. So comment something you're thankful for, and uh, we'll see you next time.